Hello, I'm Yuhan from Rice University. Today, I'm glad to present the paper with my advisor, um, Professor Peter Warman, P-Trans, a scalable algorithm for reservation guarantees in distributed systems. Let me begin my talk by giving an introduction. Nowadays, distributed storage systems have become popular in order to efficiently handle the increasing size of application datasets. Examples of these systems include Ceph, ClusterFS, VMware Visa, and Amazon AWS. So providing quality of service, also known as QoS, is an important feature of distributed systems. It involves two aspects, resource allocation, that is how much of a resource to give a client, and scheduling those requests to enforce the allocation. In general, the resources can be network bandwidth, service time, and the focus to be the focus of this paper, we abstract a resource as the number of requests processed. Reservation guarantees is one of the most important type of QoS control. So it is uh, a lower bound on the aggregated service of all servers for each client. So let me give an example of reservation guarantees in a distributed system including two servers and two clients. So firstly, each server has a certain service capacity. For instance, uh, in this figure, both servers can serve 100 IOs per second. On the other hand, the clients are sending a certain number of requests on each server, which is known as the demand of the client on the server. Finally, the clients are specifying their reservation requirements which is the minimum number of IOs the client should be received from all servers every second. So for instance, here the red client wants its throughput to be at least 100 IOs per second, and the blue client wants its throughput to be at least 50 IOs per second. Then the problem is how to schedule the requests such that the clients, both clients will meet their reservation requirements. Token-based approaches, also known as core grants core screened approaches are widely used for reservation guarantees. Scheduling credits, also known as tokens, are being used to represent the reservations for the clients. For example, if a client's reservation is 100 IOPS, they will be given 100 tokens for every second. At runtime, a token will be consumed when an IO for the client is performed and the clients with tokens available have higher priorities. So as an illustration, this figure shows our previous work, BQ's framework. Requests for different clients on different servers are stored in first-in, first-out bucket queues. And each server has a token scheduler for request scheduling. And there is a token controller, which determines the token allocation. So at runtime, the token scheduler must determine the token allocation based on the runtime client demands, server capacities, and the unmet reservations. The token allocation indicates how many IOs each server needs to do to fulfill the QoS requirements for each client. On the other hand, a token scheduler iterates across its BQs in a round-robin manner and tries to schedule one request each time. The scheduler will give um, priorities to clients with tokens remaining, and they also provide feedback to the token controller to compute new token allocations for the next round. Therefore, the goal is to determine a token allocation algorithm which can, efe which can efficiently determine the token allocation. Moreover, we also wish to find an op optimal allocation in which the maximum number of tokens will be consumed by the token schedulers. So if all tokens can be consumed at runtime, then all the reservations will be met. Next, let me show our P-Trans algorithm for determining the optimal token allocation. Firstly, let me precisely describe the token allocation problem. So the inputs are the reservations for each client, demands of each client on each server and the server capacities. The output will be the token allocation for each client on each server, 
represent the priority IOs. The goal of the token allocation problem is to maximize the number of tokens allocated subject to the following constraints. Firstly, the token allocated for a client on all servers should not exceed the client reservation because that's how reservation requirements are being represented by the tokens. Secondly, the token allocated for a client on a server should not exceed the client's demand on the server because the demand is the most number of requests that can be served for a client. Finally, the total number of tokens allocated for all clients on a server should not exceed the server's capacity because the capacity is an upper bound on number of requests the server can service. Such allocation is called an optimal allocation, and it may not be unique, in which case we only need to find one. So, the most straightforward solution is to use integer linear programming, where we can directly specify the goals and the constraints to an IOP solver, as I just presented in last slide. Then the IOP solver will give an optimal token allocation. Since IOP is known to be NP-complete, in practice, we can also use the LP with integer relaxation for approximated results in polynomial time. However, even LP is found to be very slow in practice, which will be later shown in evaluation results. So, because ILP solution is not scalable, it has high time complexity and cannot be parallelized. This motivates us to develop a load balancing model rather than the constraint satisfaction. Where the main idea is to identify and redistribute the tokens that won't be consumed at runtime so that reservations will be guaranteed. To give an idea of load balancing, let me illustrate uh, uh, it with using only one client. Basically, there will be two scenarios where tokens won't be consumed at runtime. The first scenario is the tokens allocated exist the corresponding demand, in which case we call them strong access tokens. As shown in this example, there are two servers with both uh, demands of 100 IO of the client, and the token allocation is 150 and 50. We can see on server 1, the number of tokens is 50 more than the corresponding demand, resulting in 50 strong access tokens. So to get rid of strong access tokens, they have to be moved to servers with spare demands, in which case it's server 2 in this example. And by doing so, the resulting allocation has no strong access tokens left. Another scenario the tokens won't be consumed at runtime is where tokens allocated exist the server capacity, in which case we call them weak access tokens. We can also say the server is overloaded. Also in this example, we have two servers with capacities 100 IOPS each, and the token allocation is 120 and 80. We can see on server 1, there will be 20 more tokens than the corresponding capacity, which means there are 20 weak access tokens. Similarly, to get rid of uh, weak access tokens, so they have to be moved to servers with spare capacities, So, which is server 2 in this example. And we can see the new allocation has no weak access tokens. So why we have these names, strong and weak access tokens? Because when doing load balancing with multiple clients, strong access tokens are easier to handle and avoid. The reason is because they only depend on the demand of one client on one server, and it's easy to avoid strong access tokens while removing weak access tokens. In contrast, weak access tokens are harder to handle and avoid. This is because they depend on the token allocation of all clients on the server, which makes it hard to avoid weak access tokens while removing strong access tokens. Therefore, our p trans algorithm using the following strategy. It starts from an allocation with no strong access tokens, which we can also say is a prudent allocation. Prudent allocation, we can always find it by allocating the tokens in proportion to the demands. Then the P-Trans algorithm keeps eliminating weak access tokens without generating strong access tokens until we reach a steady state. Basic operation is called a prudent transfer, which can be either direct, as the moves I just re illustrated before, 
or indirect between servers, which I will illustrate next. So let me illustrate the idea of indirect prudent transfer uh, with three client with uh, three with the following configuration. We have three servers, a hundred IOPS each, and two clients. These are the demand and token for the yellow client, and this is the demand and the token for the purple client. We can see the allocation is prudent because there is uh, the all the token allocation is no more than the corresponding demand. However, if we sum up the number of tokens on each server, we can see server one is overloaded, server two is full, and server three is underloaded, which means we have weak access tokens on server one. However, we cannot directly move uh, the tokens from server 1, which is overloaded, to server 3, which is underloaded. Because on server 1, we only have yellow tokens. However, on server 3, we don't have yellow demands. And by directly moving tokens from server 1 to server 3, we will, have, we will generate strong access tokens, which is not desirable. Therefore, the idea is to use server 2 as a broker. Since server 2 has spare demands for the yellow, it can accept the weak access tokens from server 1. Meanwhile, we don't want server 2 to become overloaded. So, we can see server 3 has uh, spare demands for the purple. That uh, means we can, move, we can meanwhile move uh, purple tokens from server 2 to server 3. So the whole move is moving 20 yellow tokens from server 1 to server 2 and 20 purple tokens from server 2 to server 3. And the resulting in the resulting configuration, the weak access tokens on server 1 gets removed while no strong access tokens were generated. So in our P-Trans algorithm, it uses a data structure called Prudent Transfer Graph, PTG, to model the prudent transfers that can be made. It indicates the number of tokens can be moved between every pair of servers in a prudent transfer. So the question is, how many tokens of a client C can be moved from server S to T? Answer is given in the following formula. But the idea is, we check how many, uh, we check number of tokens available on S, and the spare demand on T, then take the minimum. That will be the uh, number of tokens can be moved from S to T in a prudent transfer. So in the PTG, the vertices are the servers. Each direct edge is labeled by a vector, indicating the number of tokens that can be moved between each pair of servers for all clients, as shown in this, this example. We also maintain the sum of all the vector elements as edge weight, and we omit the edge with zero weights, in which case there will be no tokens can be moved. So to make a prudent transfer, step one is to find the prudent transfer find the prudent transfer path. We start from an overloaded server and use BFS to find a path to an underloaded server in the PTG. And we may use other servers as brokers. So for example, this is a prudent transfer path using two involving two brokers. Next, we need to determine the size of the transfer. So first of all, the size uh, has to be no more than the minimum weight of the edges on the path. On the other hand, to make sure we always reach a steady state, so we don't want to make the source server to be overloaded or make the destination server to be underloaded. Uh, yeah, uh, not making the source server to be underloaded or the destination server to be overloaded, which means we check the, all those terms and take the minimum. So in which in this case, the size of transfer is 25. Then we can do the move in step three. So move the tokens along the transfer path. We have to go back to the vectors uh, in the edges to determine which client's tokens to move, and we can choose any combination. So finally, since tokens are moved along the transfer path, according to the formula, those terms may, might change which means we also need to update the transfer, update the prudent transfer graph after, the move, after each move. So to ensure the convergence of P-trans algorithm, 
we will handle the overloaded servers in a server by server order. For each overloaded server J, we keep making the prudent transfers from J until we cannot uh, make more prudent transfers or J is no longer overloaded. Moreover, Ptrans can be easily parallelized by evenly partitioning the clients and let each thread working on one partition. Next, let me briefly discuss the analytical results of the Ptrans algorithm. So, firstly and most importantly, so there is an important uh, theoretical invariant of Ptrans. So, after making the prudent transfer, one of the following must happen. Either the source server J becomes full, in which case uh, the size was determined by the source server J, or the destination server becomes full, in which case uh, when the size was determined by the uh, spare capacity of the destination server K, or along the prudent transfer path, one edge weight becomes zero, in which case the size was determined by that edge. So one thing must happen. However, on the other hand, although we are able to remove edges or making overloaded or underloaded server become full, Ptrans may also make zero weighted wages having non-zero weights. So, this raises the following concerns for the Ptrans algorithm. So, firstly, does it always terminate? Is it possible for it to run into an endless loop? Secondly, if it terminates, what's the upper bound of the number of iterations? Can it be exponential in proportional to the number of paths? Because we are doing BFS. Finally, does it always terminate at a low, uh, does it terminate, always terminate with an optimal allocation? Is it possible to terminate at a local maxima? Why does no transfer pass necessarily mean we are getting the global optimal? And is it correct to do load balancing in such a server by server order? But no worries. So nevertheless, we have uh, derived the following theoretical for Ptrans. Firstly, Ptrans always terminates with an optimal token allocation which maximizes the number of reservation IOs. And the number of prudent transfers required has a strictly strict polynomial upper bound, which relies on the BFS traversal order, and an edge can only reappear, reappear in strict longer paths. So the details of the proofs can be found in the paper. So next, let me share the evaluation results. We implement the Ptrans using OpenMP, and as, as a contrast, we also implement the LP approximation using the GLPK toolkit. We test the Ptrans algorithm on a Linux machine with a 12 core Intel CPU. So for the evaluation configuration, we set uh, 64 servers and 10,000 clients, which is a scale too large for LP. So each client has a non-zero demand on eight randomly selected uh, servers. Furthermore, to stress the test, we use this distribution on the client's reservations and demands. And we also vary the following parameters, which are the fractions of the total capacity being reserved and the ratio of the total demand comparing to each client's reservation. So as a result, Ptrans can finish within one second for different uh, configurations. And for the parallelization, Ptrans can achieve six to eight times speed up with 12 parallel threads. So finally, this figure shows the execution time for the LP uh, approach with a reduced problem size. We can see from the figure, <coughs> LP will take uh, up to 30 seconds to calculate the approximate, approximated results for uh, 1,000 clients. So for the problem of all those scales, Ptrans can finish uh, within 0.5 seconds, and it will, uh, it will always provide the optimal results which means Ptrans is significantly fast. So finally, let me give the conclusions and discuss the future work directions. In conclusion, in this paper, we present a Ptrans algorithm for reservation guarantees in distributed systems. It models the token allocation problem using load balancing with a normal data graph data structure. It is probably uh, optimal and has polynomial execution time. 
compared to other approaches such as uh, LP, Heatrans has small runtime overhead and good parallelization opportunity. So in the future works, we will make the token controller distributed and study how to make better demand and capacity estimation. So that ends my talk, and I'm, I'm glad to take questions. Thank you.